Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the video, the message video. Um, we've been doing a lot of thought videos, but the message video we were unable to do. That was because of an accidental situation on the trip where the computer power cord was left behind. And um, so we didn't have the power on the computer to be able to do that. Um, we have so many exciting things to share with you and I'm not going to do all of that on this video. We're working on the newsletter and that will bring out some things that is going on. There is so much happening in the Warrior Sword Ministry and this trip just led to some just wonderful, wonderful things that took place. Um, things didn't work out the way that we planned, but um, that happens. But I have actually been working as this is Saturday and I've been working on the message for this video plus the message for tomorrow at the church and we're still praying about recording the church message as well um, and, and bringing out the thoughts from that as that will be a brand new message um, that we're doing. This is kind of a new message but definitely the verses that I'm going to share with you will be familiar I have used many of them before, and they are some of my favorites. It came into my mind, and I, I was amazed as the trip went into full effect, and um, all of the plans we thought, the, the plans that we made, um, that we put together was all done, and then everything seemed to go into turmoil. And it was like, oh my word, what are we going to do? This is a mess and it has continued, the devil has continued to attack. And maybe I didn't recognize at first um, his thumbprint, but certainly as things have played out, um, I recognized his thumbprint. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to do to destroy but he's not going to get that accomplished. And it led into my thinking, and the first verse that I want to give is out of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For our light affliction. Now let me say, in saying that, when Paul was writing that, he was under anything but a light affliction. The, the struggles were genuine prison and beatings and and abuses and and um, false accusations and all kinds of things that had gone on and so when he says for our light affliction it kind of gives you an insight into Paul's attitude which is but for a moment for our light affliction which is but for a moment it's just a passing thing even if it lasts the rest of my life, it doesn't matter because it's just a passing thing. It's just for a moment because we're headed to a better place. We're headed to heaven and we've got a hope. And, and that's where he gets these words. So follow this. He, he's going through tremendous trials and battles and he says, for our light affliction, which is just for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The struggles that we are going through is working something greater above and beyond anything that we could imagine that is eternal. It is not temporary. It is not but for a moment. It is eternal and it worketh this in us, this weight of glory. Paul understood what battles were. So have the others that were in the Bible. We forget that 
sometimes. I've quoted Psalms 34 because thir Psalms 34 is by far, I think, one of the best Psalms out there. Uh, most of my life I heard Psalms 23, and that is definitely one of the best Psalms out there too. But Psalms 34 just has some amazing verses. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. God delivers us. God delivered this trip and, and put together just some great things that happened. The meetings were great. Side issues that happened were great. There, there was phone calls that took place in the middle of the situation. It, it was just phenomenal to watch God work. There, there's many afflictions that go on, but the Lord delivers us out of all of them. And because of who God is, and we need to recognize, recognize this, Psalm 34, 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. God has been teaching me so much about trust. I, I, I thought I understood trust. I thought that I fully trusted him. I'm learning a lot of things about trust and, and what that actually means to trust him. And we are blessed if we trust him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste of how wonderful and awesome and amazing he is. Taste of his glory, of his goodness. It's wonderful to come to that recognition of just how awesome God is. And there's lots of things, let me say, I don't have time enough on this video to cover all of them. There's lots of things that makes him awesome. But one of the great things, Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, first part for I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, the Muslims, they worship Allah, and Allah is very flippant. Allah can change his mind and decide to do things differently. You're never really sure whether you're in the pleasure of Allah or his displeasure because he changes his mind. Jesus changes not. God does not change. And he's, that's how we can learn of his sweetness. He, he said in Matthew 28, during the, the statement of the Great Commission, he will never leave us nor forsake us. All power has been given to him in heaven and in earth, and he does not change. Glory to his name. You can always count on him. You can always know that he will be there for you. He is not a hireling. He is the great shepherd. He is the great I am. Praise his name. We need to recognize in these times of, of struggle and battle that we are going through and uncertainty as the world, especially our nation of the United States of America, crumbles right before our eyes. And I know so many people that are running around tr just trying to figure out how to fix it with the election in 2024. I don't care about the election in 2024. I don't care about what is going on in the political arena. I care about Jesus Christ and he does not change. And he said he will never leave us and never forsake us. All power is not given into the hands of a useless president. All power is given into the hands of Almighty God. And these struggles and the afflictions and the battles, these light things that we go through that sometimes weighs us down so much in our lives, praise God, quit being weighed down because they are only for a short moment. 
And they are accomplishing a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Boy, did I not know that I was going to get so passionate and excited today. Luke 22, verses 31 to 34, shares an interesting story. It is at the Passover meal, what we know as the Last Supper. Jesus is speaking to the great apostle Peter, who was not yet great by any means. And, and Jesus says to him, Satan has desired to have you that he could sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Peter. I have prayed for you. Peter declares, I will go with you to the death. Nothing is going to make me separated from you. And Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, by the time the rooster crows in the morning, you will have denied me three times. So the struggle still came. Peter still failed. Did that mean that Jesus' prayer was not answered? I've talked about that story a lot. And that just registered with me. It's like Jesus says to you, this is what Satan wants to do. And Peter, I have prayed for you. But seemingly the prayers weren't answered. Peter still faced the battle and Peter still failed desperately. Seems maybe that if you looked at it within the afflictions and the trials and the struggles which made Peter run off and weep bitterly, it would seem that Jesus' prayer was not answered. But Jesus brings the statement, when you are converted, when your life has changed, when you've come to the place of really understanding who I am, you minister to the brethren. See, just because we pray doesn't mean that we're not going to go into the trial. Just because we pray doesn't mean that we're not going to go into the affliction. It, just because we pray doesn't mean that there's not going to be those moments when, when we're looking up wondering why this has happened. I know I've said it to you before. Let me repeat. Let me review. It comes when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego look at the great King Nebuchadnezzar and say to him, our God can deliver us. But if he doesn't, we still will not bow our knee to you or to your idols. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have been running around in all of this turmoil, paste posting on Facebook and, and, and sending out all kinds of things saying, oh, the world is caving in. Well, let me tell you something. If the sky falls on you today, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I think some of the best verses, and, and I have said this, Philippians is one of my favorite books out of the scripture, and I think that Philippians has so many wonderful things in it, and this is a selection of it. I'm going to read these verses to you. It's Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. The same Paul is writing the things that I had, the gain, the, the pleasure and the material and all of those things that I had, I counted them all as lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. 
see Paul isn't just giving hyperbole he, he isn't saying well I'm giving God everything while he's trying to hold on to it because he's already experienced the loss of everything that he knew his position his prestige his authority his power is all gone and he says I count them but dung Excuse me for being specific, but they're a pile of poop in the corner. I know I will offend people by saying that. Why are they dung that I may win Christ? And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. My righteousness, your righteousness, and everybody else's righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't care how holy you think you live. You'll never be good enough. But where we get it is the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. For those who run around and say, if you're really a Christian, you're never going to struggle with anything. Everything's going to go right. You can be on top of the mountain. Suck it up, buttercup! And the fellowship of his sufferings. I know. I'm, I'm just getting way... I thought when I got on the computer that I was not even going to feel like doing this. Being made conformable unto his riches. That isn't what it says. Being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I too kind of apologize to you that I got so passionate and excited, but I want to tell you something. God has just been amazing. I've got to set across from people that are going through things much greater than I can imagine. And so many of them, their, their faith was what was important to them. They, they understood that it is by faith in God that we gain the righteousness. Not by what I wear. Not by whether I have a watch on. By faith in God. And Jesus just proved that you can taste and see that the Lord is good. If you're listening to this message and you have forgotten that the Lord is good. If you're going through things that it doesn't seem like that anything is good, I want to tell you today, no matter what you're going through, the storm still comes, but Peter still failed, the struggle still happened, but Jesus' prayer came through, and when everything was said and done and all the dust cleared, Peter became one of the greatest warriors that the kingdom of God has ever known. Yes, there's days I feel like a failure. Yes, there's days that I just like Peter want to run off and weep bitterly. But Jesus says, oh, taste and see that I am good. I want you to recognize today 
And I know, again, I preached a few weeks ago about please don't quit. And I know some of you are still going through the struggles. Some of you are still going through the battles. The ministry is exploding. And yet I look at the ministry and realize that there's many struggles going on there. But the struggle doesn't matter because the great I am is the one that is in control, not me. So stop, breathe in the fresh air, smell the wonderful smell of the flowers and the creation around you, and taste and see that our Lord is good. Be reminded of it. God bless you. Thank you for watching.